Lumio is an all-in-one lighting solution based on the best of the best of Houdini Solaris and HDR Light Studio. It has amazing features such as interactive mode, comparing collections, HDRIs, IES textures, gobos, gradient lights, light painting and more. The last time I remember Blender did something cool with lighting was when they released Blender 3.5 which was the introduction to light linking. That was in 2023. Now two years later I feel like Blender's lighting system could use a complete overhaul to make it more intuitive, more easy, more useful and a lot more fun. Which is why I decided to look at lighting systems in other 3D programs such as Houdini's Solaris and I noticed a lot of things that we could use in Blender as well. Lumio will change your approach to lighting. As a matter of fact, I'm so confident about this that I'm willing to say that this is the best solution that I've created for the Blender community thus far. In this video, I'll quickly show some of its features, but later this week, I will make an entire step-by-step -step process on how Lumio actually works, and it's going to be called the full guide. So for now, let's get started. So you probably remember when we had to use multiple lights, like this, and uh, if you want to change something, then you have to select this one, then you have to select this one, and then you go over here and then we have to rotate this one like so and then we have to rotate this one like so and uh, we are not going to do that anymore. We are simply going to add an area light and you can enter into interactive mode by pressing shift tab. Shift tab will bring you into interactive mode. Uh, right now you can use your mouse to position the light. So we are in front mode and this means that the light will always be positioned to the front of the uh, object. But if we press on two we can also position the light at the back like this. Now of course we can increase or decrease the strength as well by holding shift. And finally if we press three, uh, we have a little dot that appears right here. It is going to be blue and you can rotate the light around that axis. And this is going to be the last axis that we touched using the mouse to place our lighting. So if I press on three right now, uh, I'm just going to place one on the front right here. Now it is a bit bright and we can change some other settings of this light as well. So if we hold control, we can increase the size and we can also bring it further away by holding alt. So we can select the light and as you can see, it will be blue and we can change the light temperature simply by holding shift and scrolling. Now we can also change the spread. As you can see, we can hold alt and change the spread. We can also use the fine grained rotation because normally you would do something like this. But we can also hold control and really dial in that correct rotation that we need. Let's say that we have multiple lights. So there's another area light right here. I'm going to place it over there. Let's press on two and bring it to the back. Let's increase the strength of this, maybe somewhere uh, over there. We get this cool looking rim light. And let's say that we want to know what the effect is of this light. I can press on Q. And now Q will isolate this light and we can only see the effects that this light has. Now if we press on Q again and select another light by switching through it using the arrow keys, we can press on Q and see what this light does. Uh, now let's decrease the power of this just a little bit. Let's place it a little bit more towards this side, I guess. Something like uh, like this. And now you can see the stark difference between those lights. We can also press on O and it will remove all the overlays. And that will allow us to see it just a little bit better. Uh, there's also another function right in here, Shift V, in order to go into look through mode, which will bring us with a camera view into our light. This will allow you to aim the light exactly at the object. Now this is not perfect yet, uh, but I really wanted to add it so it's in there. All of this also works for spotlights, by the way. So now that we've got this lighting setup, I will show you exactly what Lumio can do. We used to have multiple lighting setups that we make over and over again, such as three point lighting setups and stuff like that. And we've got that right over here. So three point lighting, side lighting, split lighting, Rembrandt, rim light, there are five presets and we also have five colors. So that actually solves that problem. You don't have to ever do that again. So the three point lighting, let's create it. And it will create this light. I selected pink and cyan and we can also cycle through the colors of this. So you can change the color of each light uh, directly with this button. Now, I also have a function in here, make lights proportional to object. What this does, and it's based on the inverse square law for lighting, uh, it makes sure that for each object, uh, we have the correct lighting setup. So let's create a new lighting setup right over here. Let's select the lights. Uh, I'm just going to do it the simple way real quick. Uh, bring it to this side. Now let's say that this object is a whole lot bigger just going to select it right here. And the lights will be placed right over there and the power of the lights will be adjusted. So as you can see, this is 1824 
uh, on this side. And if we go over to the previous one, so this one, select this light, you can see this is 39. Uh, so now for each object, we get the same lighting, no matter how big they are. So the presets always work. Now, as you already saw, I was kind of moving through these lights. And usually when you make a lighting setup, it's a bit of a hassle to compare them to other lighting setups. So I solved that problem. We can simply click on the switch button and now we cycle through the different lighting setups that we created. And you can easily see which one is your favorite. Uh, now, of course, for all of these, we can duplicate the collection and make some slight adjustments. So let's say we've got this one, duplicate. Just going to call it test two, select all the lights. You can do that. Uh, you can select an origin point. So the monkey, for example, and it will place it in line. Uh, the light adjustment allows you to change where the lights are positioned. So you can rotate them around like this and you can track it to origin like so. And if you now move it, it will always face towards the desired object and you can rotate it around. And this really makes lighting procedural, kind of like Geolights Pro. You can change the scaling of this for each light. You can change the distance of the light as well. And of course, all the power of the light at once. So let's say you increase the distance and this looks a bit better, but now you want to increase the power of all of them. You can definitely do that. Switching through the lighting setups, very cool stuff. Now I've also added something new that I've never seen any other 3D program do. Uh, it's called light painting. So if you start painting, let's turn this off for now. Uh, if we start painting, we can paint light on our object. And the way this works, it's based on the average of all the normals that we stroked. So if we make a stroke right here, it will place it right at the cube. But on a more complex subject like the Suzanne monkey head, it will calculate the average normal and place it somewhere over there. So that's the way it works. You can change the light energy beforehand and the light size. And if you press on enter, that is going to be its collection, the painted light collection. And all of them are in here. And now let's take the three point lighting setup. And one of the problems I used to run into was that you had to go over here, go to shading, go to light linking, click on new, and then you can add your object. And if you have a lot of objects, it's kind of a hassle. Uh, so I'm going to delete that and we're going to open up the light linking panel. Uh, for the collection, I'm going to select three point and this one will be monkey, add light linking. And as you can see, it immediately works only on the monkey for all of the lights. So if we look here, we can see that it has Susan. This one has Susan, and the other one has Susan as well. We can also toggle the collection like this and now it will work on the cube and not on the monkey. And you can also select an individual light and toggle that one on and off. Uh, for the light linking itself. So it will automatically add light linking to an entire collection. And of course, we can also remove the light linking straight away. I'm going to close this off. We're going to open HDRI browser. You can select the folder right here. It will automatically open up each time you open up Lumio. And if you select your folder, select your HDRI, apply the HDRI and manipulate it in whatever sense you would like. You can increase and decrease the strength and you can change it right over here, apply ACRI, apply ACRI, and that's just the way it works. Rotate it around, do whatever you want. I'm going to set the strength to zero. We've also got IES browser, which means that we can add IES textures. So let's me, let me go over here, I'm going to turn this off, and I will add a point light, bring it into its own collection, which is going to call it point, and I will also bring in a plane and this light looks pretty boring, but we've got some built-in presets. So let's say we select this one, apply preset, and you can immediately see that we have some pretty cool lighting. Of course, you can add temperature. So let's set this to 4300, click on this button, and now this will be the temperature. Go over here, apply the preset, and that's the way it works. And I selected the 10 most used IES presets. Uh, you can also add your own folder. So if you already have a collection of IES files, you can select folder, go over here, select it and now you will also have them over here and it definitely works however you will not get the cool thumbnail previews like you got with this one we can increase the strength or decrease the strength do whatever you like so that's it for IES textures so then we have gradient lights and gradient lights are actually pretty good for reflections I will show you in the screen why this is a good feature to have. So I'm going to click on create light and let's go over here it will automatically create a new folder gradient collection and it starts off as a circle you can also make it linear like this and if you play around with it you can change the fall off and that will change the entire light it's pretty good for reflective objects now of course you can change the size of the light as well 
uh, change the temperature if you would like, uh, something like this, or maybe change the spread to change the entire look of the light if you just need something that's a little bit different after all. So something like this and uh, change the from max to change the fall off for example or play around with this and find whatever you need for your project. Now we also have the Gobo browser. I'm going to do that on a spotlight. So let's bring that up here. Gobo browser and uh, let's select this one, apply and we can already see a cool little tree. It works with temperature of course and there's multiple presets that you can use right here for whatever project you would like. Now the spotlight also works with interactive mode. So if we got interactive mode right here, we can change several properties, including the blend mode, which you can do with holding alt and the middle mouse. We can change the radius by holding alt and scrolling, stuff like that. So this also works for the spotlight. So where is our cool little monkey right over here? And we already got that going on like this. Now, if you already have a folder with gobos, you can select this folder right here, select your gobos, and then it will load in like this. And you can select them from over here as well. Uh, I tried doing this with the Ultimate Gobo Pack. Some of you might already have that one, uh, but it is a bit slow since there are 365 gobos and they're all being loaded in. So it will slow down if you use the Ultimate Gobo Pack right here. Uh, that's why I added this button. So open asset browser right here. It automatically opens up the asset browser and you can go to the ultimate gobo pack and use whatever gobos are in there. That's just a quick little thing. So you don't have to do it manually each time. Of course, there are also instructions. So we've got them right here, all shortcuts. And this is how interactive mode works. So you always have this nearby. That's it for this short video. Later on in this week, I will upload the full guide to Lumio and how to use it. This is just a quick rundown. If you would like to get Lumio or need more information about this, check out the link in the comments or in the description. Uh, I've also placed a link to the King of Light pack, which contains Geolites Pro, the Ultimate Gobo pack and Lumio. So choose whichever one suits you and I'll see you in the next video. I get the money and it's right on cue. Keep the duffel bag up inside my coop. Hold a couple racks, tell them I love you. You want to be a boss, do it like I do. Uh, yeah.